Hey, what is up, guys? Klausnix here, and welcome to the KX Podcast. This is episode 8, and today with me is my friend Taylor Oxlgren, also known as Ox, the nickname that he developed when we played football together. We met playing high school football, and we had kind of a weird friendship in high school, I think, and that friendship was mostly him kicking my ass, like, play after play after play, but um, that kind of ties into, I guess, what we're talking about today which is mental toughness. And and I guess our friendship was kind of built out of mental toughness, out of the sport of football. I guess that's why I thought you would be a good guest for this. How are you feeling so far? Oh, man, I'm nervous. <laughs> I no, know. no, yeah, I agree, yeah. And I feel like that's what football kind of, like, really did for me. That's kind of, like, why I brought it up, because, like, you're, like, uh, name something that's, like, super important to fitness that I should cover, and I said mental toughness specifically because I feel like when I was a kid, like, I was, like, really wimpy, or in my head I was. And then when I started playing football, it's like the, my entire like image of myself and like who I was just like completely changed, just from like my ability to like I guess flex my mind. I mean, like I learned how to like if something was hard, like I would like like b- battle and conquer rather than just let it like crush over me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And kill me. Yeah. Or not actually kill me, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like that allowed me to like overcome things, like especially like football, and then it just like built from there and built into other things in life. Yeah, and you kind I, of find that as well. Like I think you were the exact yeah. same. I think that's why, like, kind of why we are friends. Because I remember when I first saw you, just like I would say, you looked completely clueless when you first started playing football, and you had no idea what was going on. But you, you know what I mean? Everyone does. But then like you slowly build on that, and then all of a sudden, like you kind of know what you're doing, and then you get confidence, and then you realize, and then you realize that you can do stuff, and then you get like confident in what you're doing. You build like your mental toughness up, right? And it affects your entire life. Yeah, yeah, and totally. Then, uh, yeah, I mean it's. You, you need that to develop that confidence. I mean, ultimately, that's what football taught me, which was, like, getting up again and getting up again and getting up again when you don't want to. And that's, like, mental toughness is kind of... You could use a, a lot of words for mental toughness. You could use dedication. You could use commitment. You could use, I don't know, mental fortitude. Mental toughness kind of plays into all those things. And that's, like, that I developed from football because I went into football feeling like, I guess... I didn't have a lot of confidence, and I kind of felt like, I don't know, I, I, I struggled to find a place in the world, because I didn't have that confidence, and I didn't feel like I was able to do do the things that I wanted to do, because I just didn't have the skills. And then I learned that I was good at something. And then in order to be good at something, you have to practice it and get beaten down and, and build back up again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like It's weird. My parents like forced me into football. <laughs> it's like weird and then I like didn't want to go and they're like you like you're going I'm like this sucks yeah. and then and then literally like within like a week I'm like this is awesome I'm like man and then I was like I always think back and I'm like if they didn't force me like who would I be today like it's actually the one time yeah. where I feel like the my parents pushed me into something that like, really worked out because it's like I, I just like I, I did, wouldn't have developed all these skills I probably would just be like sitting on the couch like eating Doritos and playing video games and I probably would have <laughs> never cared about anything I yeah didn't. Well, that was, the, that was the same as me. My parents also pushed me to play football. Yeah, right. I don't like to admit that because I feel like that makes me look yeah. like a, like I, I didn't decide anything in my life. But they pushed me. I hated sports because I sucked at them. It was only when I started playing football I realized that there's sports for fat people. Yeah, me too. Same as sports. I was like, man, it's like the sports suck. It's like I'm, I'm like slow-ish. You know, it's like I can't move side to side very fast. It's like I can't really do anything. And then all of a sudden you just, you just like kind of realize like they're like especially with football there's like something that fits you like even if you're just a kicker you know what I mean yeah. there's like there's like a specific spot for everyone yeah and then you know you just find your spot and then you just hone it and you just realize like man I'm like I'm part of this team it doesn't matter if I'm not fast someone's fast for me and it doesn't matter if they're not strong I'm yeah. strong for them it's like it's super cool yeah I yeah. think you know, I, I fell in love with football like maybe it was like during that spring camp or whatever when like at when the end of the it? practice yeah. when we were all like we all suffered we're all covered in mud like you know it was a long battle but we're all taking a knee, and the coach brings us in together and tells us we're all a family. You know what I mean? And it's just like, we all suffered together, but we all grew from it. And then it was like, man, I'm sore the next day, but I'm ready to go see my brothers again. I'm ready to go suffer and put it all out there again. Because it's such a rewarding experience when you put it all out there. And yeah, for sure. Yeah. So when did you when did you first experience that, like, you need to be mentally tough or you're not going to make it? Or was that just the general thing feeling that you got from football? Uh, I guess like it was it was like there's like I have like two things in my head like there's just the general like my first year of football like I sucked right and I was like and that like 
but I like was like getting like kind of beaten up, beaten up, beaten up. And I'm like, man, like th- like this sucks, right? And I just like eventually just after you get beaten up, like I guess at first you're just like, oh, I guess I'm just gonna take it because I suck. But then like <laughs> it's like fire built in you, and I'm like, no, I don't want to suck forever. So then you slowly like and like you you start fighting back, and even though you're losing, you know, just like losing by a little bit less, a little bit less, a yeah. little bit less until you're like you're not winning yet, but you're just like not losing yet either. Yeah. And yeah. then at the very end of the, my first season, like I was playing bantam football, and then we won the championship or whatever. And I remember, like I we got the little DVD or CD or whatever. And then I uh, I was like watching like film on it, right? Like with my dad. And then I was watching. It, I'm like, man, I suck. I was just, like, this kid was like roasting. Like, yeah, he was like doing this like this wide nine like technique, which just just basically means like. For offensive tackles, they were like really far out there. They're, like, they're really far away from me, and I didn't know how to deal with it at the time, especially since I was so new. But I was just getting schooled. Yeah. And like even my dad was like, "You suck," and like I guess the one that pissed oh, me off man. a ton because he was just being so critical of me. But then like I knew I knew it was true. Like he wasn't being harsh. That's just like, actually how it was. Yeah. And I could see it, and that just like ever since then, it just it, like still to this day, like I think of it all the time, and it makes me like throw up in my like brain. Yeah. I'm like, and, and then <laughs> from then I'm like. I'm never gonna suck at football again. Yeah. And then, and then the next next year I just played high school football. And I was just like determined to like just do everything I could not suck and just like be the best, I guess. And I was just like, I feel like that that was like the moment that just like clicked like for me to just like grind and bust my ass in like the gym and on the field. And I was like, I never will be that person again that just like thinks they they completely suck or they yeah. just like aren't don't want to be there. Not that I didn't want to be there, just like. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have the aggression. Like I just was missing so many components, and that just made me so mad. It still makes me mad. I'm pissed off right now about it. <laughs> yeah. You kind of know what I mean. Do you have that yeah. moment too? Like, yeah. No, I do. I mean, I like. It's almost kind of an honor to have you on a podcast talking about mental toughness because I I really owe my mental toughness to you because in high school you were the what were you the right tackle or the left tackle? I, uh, I was the guard, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. You played everywhere on the line. I played. I, I like. did play everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, I just I have distinct memories. Okay, that's because we, I was always an end, and then we played in the thirty. So I was up against the guard and the tackle. That's what I'm thinking of. But I just just distinctively remember being up against you because that was my place on the defense. I was your place on the offense. It was rep after rep after rep after rep. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, you had this this rep, in the high school football league that you just killed anybody you went up against, and I guess what. Very different from the story you just told, where you're like, oh man, I suck, I suck. But like, you developed this reputation, I guess, over time from your experiences that people were scared to go against you. And then, you know, we had drills and nobody would line up against you. But I made, I deliberately went up against you as much as possible because I knew no one else did and I knew that's where the growth was. I learned that in high school. Like, football is where I learned a lot of the values that I have today because I, I learned that, like, if you go out of your comfort zone, you go in the place that sucks the most, the place that's going to push you the hardest, you know, like, that is where I really developed into a football player, and that's where I developed, like, my mental toughness. Because even if you suck as a football player, if you're tough and you keep getting up again, you keep fighting, it doesn't really matter, because there's going to be a place for you. Yeah. You're, you're going to fit in on the team somewhere. Yeah. Or at least you won't, like, you won't be, like, I remember, too, like, my, my first year of football, like, I was like, should I try out for the JV or for the varsity? And I remember specifically my uncle's like, well, it's better to be the slowest guy on the like, varsity team or the, or the worst guy on the varsity team than the best guy on the JV team. Or that maybe, yeah. maybe some people disagree, but it's like, it's better you're going to be, the, the, be yeah. the worst in the like best group than the best in the worst group. You know what I mean? That way yeah. you at least have somewhere to grow and move up the rank. It's like if you're the best in like a tier two group you know what I mean no, nothing against exactly. JV there's nothing wrong with being a JV and being the worst guy but I mean if you if you had to pick right it's better to be at the bottom and climb somewhere rather than just be content with like you know, being in like a mediocre group absolutely you know yeah mean? yeah I mean once you've learned that it takes mental toughness to get where you want to be you start to develop a mindset where you know that you're supposed to be looking for the places that are going to challenge you in order to grow so what kind of mindset does it take to be mentally tough? Honestly, I think like just having an open mind is actually to a mindset you have to have. Like, I feel like people like it's weird because people look at the mental toughness as like just like the, like brute force of your mind, and they're like, yeah, just like flexing your mind and just like doing hard stuff. But I feel like so they imagine like someone having to like run up a hill and like conquer the hill. You know what I mean? 
yeah. as, as like as like mental toughness, right? But like mental toughness isn't just like that. It's like doing things that like perhaps don't seem. It's like like you know, say you like you're embarrassed to like go to the gym, like for a girl or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like mentally tough, mental being mentally tough is just stepping in the gym. You know what I mean? Or like saying like you're in, say you're injured or something, right? And you know your your shoulder or whatever your elbow is like hurt. I mean, like someone would be like, oh, just push through it, brother, or whatever. You know what I mean? So like, if you know that's dumb, like being mentally tough means too is that you can like back away from your ego for a second and do what you have to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who cares about crushing? It's not about crushing. It's about making yourself like better and just being tough enough to you know. What I mean? Oh yeah, do I want to like yeah. bench heavy today? Yeah, I do. But is that the best thing for me? No. So being able to tell yourself no. Regardless, of, even even sometimes it's even like it's physically easy, but it's mentally hard. Yeah, being able to make those decisions, I feel like, or is like, is like the next level of mental toughness. So I feel like that's the next like level that I like took. You kind of know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like it's the one thing to be able to like oh I like crush yourself in the gym, mean, you know? but then progressing there further, it's like well I can crush myself in the gym, but now how can I do it smarter? How can I do it better? You know I mean, rather than just being a pointless like any animal can just like be go crazy and just like you know. What I mean? be deterred, but it's like, now you, you don't want to be an animal, you want to be a human being that makes intelligent decisions, you know what I mean? Yes. So, like, balancing, like, using your mental toughness to, like, keep that in check, keep your almost desires in check, your, like, passions in check, and make the smart decisions rather than the brash and, like, the hard decisions, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah, it's just, like, it's just leaving your comfort zone, really. Yeah, yeah, putting, exactly. Putting your, deliberately putting yourself in positions that you know you're going to struggle in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely learned that being in university and, like, Every time you take a new class, you don't know the people, you don't know the subject, you get put in practicum, you're forced to work with people you don't know in environments that you're not very good at. There's so much growth there because it's just that constant leaving your comfort zone. And the more times that you push yourself to do the things that you don't want to do, like you mentioned, like going to the gym for the first time, like that is a huge milestone for people. Yeah. When I talk to people who are like not sure like how to get into health and fitness or they're like, oh, I just can't commit. Like, and then you kind of, like, you dig a little bit deeper into how they're thinking. And, like, they think that they have to be in the gym five, six days a week, you know? And they think that they have to just commit to this super intense lifestyle. It's, like, all you have to do, just leave your comfort zone. Hang out a little bit and, and you know, and come back in. And the next time you leave, you can be out a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like it's, like, I don't know if it's just, like, how people are nowadays. They just, like, automatically think, like, oh, I have to be, like, going nuts and crazy. And that's, like, an all or nothing thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to, like, look at yourself honestly and realize where you are. And then appropriately, you know what I mean? For example, like, let's say, like, I don't know, let's imagine some weird exercise, like, where you have to, like, you know, like, stand on your head, you know, and just, like, spin around for, like, like 10 seconds, you know what I mean? In a pink tutu. You yeah. Know what I mean? Would you, would I want to do that? Would you want to do that in the middle of a gym? And say it's, like, a, a gym where everyone's, like, stronger than you and bigger than you, you know, you're training for football or whatever you're training for, right? That would be hard. Yeah. Right? What if that tutu exercise made you, like, way better? Yeah. Would you still be able to do it? It doesn't look cool. It doesn't look badass. But you know it makes you way better. It's like Definitely. A mentally tough person would be able to do it. I mean? Yeah. Can, can you and me say that we can do it? I don't know. Like, when I when I first started doing hip thrusts, like, it was hard for me. Like, I, 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 I was new to the exercise, so I couldn't load it very heavy. One. Two, you're basically humping the air, <laughs> right? Just, like, just like thrusting your hips in the air, humping yeah. air. And it's just super awkward looking. Everyone's like, what the heck is this guy doing? Yeah. But you mean, if you know what makes you better, right? Some people will be like, I can't do it. It looks too weird. You mean? But then, like, other people, you mean, the people that are mentally tough, they're like, it, yeah, it looks weird, but you know what I mean? This is what I need to do. So they do it. You know? they, just like you say, they get out of their comfort zone. Yeah. Well, I mean, before the podcast, we were talking about neck exercises. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, hip thrusts are one thing. Like, I haven't even done hip thrusts. Well, not for any particular reason, but the factor has come into my head, like, oh, I'm going to look goofy. And then that's... Neck exercises is next level. Like you, you see somebody like doing a neck exercise on YouTube, and it, and the title of the video is "Gym Fail." Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. Man. <laughs> and it's there's there's benefits to be reaped, but you have to leave your comfort zone and stop worrying so much about what everybody thinks. Yeah, or even just like giving up some fun or something. Like sometimes I see guys like go, like no offense to guys that go to the gym with their bros, but it's like. They're going to the gym, like, they're, they're consistent, like, every single week in, week out, they follow their, like, plan or their, their program, whatever they do, right? Say they, they bench 3 by 5 for, like, like 150 or whatever. Then all of a sudden, their one bro will come along for one day, and they're just like, hey, let's max out today, man. And then one guy's like, oh, okay. Yeah. And they just max out. It's like, it's like yeah, your, your buddy's there. I'm sure he wants to max out, but is that, is that really making you better? 
Yeah. No, but you do it because your body, because you like enjoy it, right? But again, like if you're like really committed to that goal, it'd be mentally tough and say, "Nah, man, you know you can max out. I'll still spot you and everything, but I'm gonna do my sets." You know what I mean, yeah. it's like another level that even then I struggle with sometimes. Sometimes my friends will come in, they're like, "Hey, I'm gonna hit this today," and like, and then even I'll be like, "Oh, I'll like either like try and work in with them or whatever." I'm like, but I'll, in hindsight, every single time I do that, I'm like, "That is dumb. I wish I didn't do that." <laughs> yeah, you know I, mean? I wish I stuck to my plan. So like, I always try and follow like my plan. This is a rant about what I do, but you know, anytime it's like yeah. weird how it's like such a huge, a huge scope. It's super weird, like it, from doing like hip thrust to like working out with your bro. It's like it's weird. Like it doesn't matter if it's fun or if it's like or if it's awkward. Some of those things you have to just make the like tough decisions. You know, tough decisions isn't always like doing the hard thing. It's just doing like even like avoiding the things you want to do, which kind of sounds weird. Yes. Yeah. At some point, you like you 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 get to a point where it's like you have to be mentally tough to take the first step. But then eventually, after you've done that thing for a while, you reach that other level where you have to restrain yourself. Yeah. And saying no. I've been learning that in my strength training program. It's like, you have to go up like two and a half pounds a side a week, you know? And if you get that growth, that's awesome because you've made gains. But it's a, even though it's kind of humiliating to put those little things on, they're like as light as a, as a tissue. But I mean, it's like... That's restraining. That's not like, man, I feel strong today. I'm going to add a 25 on each side of the bar. Yeah. That's mental toughness, not like lowering it up to see how much you can push and see how tough you are. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Everyone like makes fun of me because I love those. I call them cookies, the two and a half. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone makes fun of me. They're like, man, you got a, you got like like three plates on and a cookie. It's like, why? Yeah. It's like, well, if I add a cookie every yeah. sing, every two weeks or whatever, it's like, that's a lot of weight after after a year. You know? Yeah. And but people just don't think about that. Yeah. And if you go... If you go to the gym with your bros and you max out, you've just, there, there was no room for growth or progress. You went all yeah. out. Yeah. And that was it. It's zero or a hundred. Yeah. That's not how you climb the ladder. Yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe, maybe if you have that perfect world, you have that program and you're like ready to go. But 99% of the time, you know, when your bro shows up to the gym with you, you know, you just throw your plan out the window and you're like, I'm just doing whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's almost weird. It's like sometimes you have to like you run into conflicts with like your personal life and like your goal or whatever. So really, really be having like mental toughness. Be saying, you know, this is my goal. I'm gonna like push this to the side. You know what I mean? Not yeah. enjoy this or whatever, and take the other route. Even though this route is harder physically, and but it's also funner. But that's not the right path. Yeah. It's super weird. That's something like when I first started like working out or even playing football. It's like I never realized. You know what I mean, it's not just like crushing it. It's about crushing it like smartly. You know? Yes. Yeah. Calculating your, calculating your risks. Yeah. Yeah. So how much of like, how much of the gym is, is I guess physical at that point and how much of the gym is mental? Yeah. I don't know. I'd always say it's just, it's just like almost purely, almost everything you do is mental. I think like, yeah, I don't know. Like, like the gym is almost all mental for me. It's just like, like how much of it, of like what your experience is just in your brain. Technically all of it, all your sensations are in your brain. Right. So it's like, Everything's just a mental battle, like getting another rep, getting whatever. Yeah, it's like it's just a constant mental toughness battle, I guess. And then even then, like, say you feel super strong that day, it's like, man, maybe I could load an extra like, like ten kilos or whatever, like twenty five pounds. It's like you have to say no, yeah, because you need to train in like two days or whatever. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? your mind is betraying you. Yeah, like your own <laughs> your pre workout is calling your, the shots yeah, now. Your, your own desire for like your progress is like betraying your like actual plan. Which will usually, for most people, lead them further, right? Most people just abandon their plans halfway through, which is another thing in mental toughness, just sticking to your plan. Yeah, even if you get bored after two months. Yeah, or even if it goes wrong, you know, like just seeing yeah. it through, like, because you never know sometimes, right? Sometimes, like, like when, you know, I, I don't know, like, if when you're in the middle of, like, the trench or whatever at the low, lowest point, it's like, you don't know, like, how high the hill is going to be after you climb out of it, so you yes. never know, just like... If you only have like a week left, you're like, oh, this isn't working. Just see it through, right? And then you can make your, form your opinions after that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a really good analogy. Yeah. Just deciding to go to the gym is, is mental. And that's a big enough mental battle as it is. And then you get into the gym and then there's all the, you know, there's, there's the, the all the decisions you make, what you're going to wear, you know, how you're going to start. Someone's in your squat rack. That's how you're starting. What are you going to do? Do you abandon your workout? Do you go to another, your next exercise or do you wait for the rack? Everything you do is mental. So in that case, like going to the gym isn't so much like about how strong you are. I and mean, when you talk to people who are like nervous about going to the gym or like they, they don't know how to get into the gym life, it's not because they like, I'm too weak. People say I have no motivation. 
you know, people understand that this it's a mental thing. Yeah. Even people who aren't into the, the lifestyle know that it's a mental thing. So if that is what we need to be tweaking. Yeah, for sure. And not like leaning on motivation, but more getting into habits and routines so that we don't have to. Um, if you get into a habit or routine, you don't have to be so mentally tough because you get your brain into a pattern. Yeah, for you know, sure. Then it kind of it takes the edge off of it. Yeah. Speak, uh, yeah, I just actually like listened to actually another podcast that talked about a similar topic, saying how like inspiration is like gives you a little bump in like your like mental toughness or whatever motivation, whatever you want to call it, for a brief period of time, and then but you can't rely on those. It's like you're in a boat, right? And then the inspiration is just a little wave, and it, but you can't count on the wave to be there forever, right? So you form habits, right? And the habits are like kind of like making yourself like a little ladder or something to like climb out of the boat or whatever, right? Because you, you want the water to raise you up so you can get out of the boat. I don't know where, where, what lake you're in, but you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> right? So you can't rely yeah. on those little brief things like, oh, I'm going to crush it today. You know what I mean? You have to like build these habits and over time, you know, that's like takes mental toughness too. Just like building habits. Like anyone can like go into the gym and just crush it when they feel like, oh, I saw this Instagram post. This guy's huge. I want to get huge. And it's just like following the plan, building habits, like building like sustainable things. You know what I mean? Yes. And, like, yeah. and then, like, obviously, like, if you're passionate about it, that he makes it even easier. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean mental toughness has this, uh, this stigma around it that is macho and bravado and masculine and, like you said, going into the gym and crushing it. But it's also very, like, passive and receptive and, like, cooling off and, and staying back and thinking and strategizing. It's not so much going all out berserker mode. Sometimes it's just more the thinking aspect yeah that's exactly long term right. yeah and I feel like that's exactly what people like a lot of like bros like we're, we're gym bros I guess like that's what people just toss to the side it's like oh I just like hit the iron man it's like nothing else matters <laughs> it's like it's what people always like think about but it's like you know what I mean like maybe, maybe like that isn't the only like way to do it you know we could be smarter and like we could like, like let's just not let's be smart about what we do you know so let's control our like aggression for like progress and, and like hit lifting heavy things to, to like better ourselves in the future rather than just like appease our like right now desire to lift things yeah and that's for everything in life too which is super weird that's the one thing about football and the gym like you can like you can always correlate it to everything in life yeah definitely do you think that um i guess mental toughness or having a developed mindset do you think that that's like something that we're lacking i guess as our society because you mentioned earlier that like we're really competitive and we're result oriented and we think we just have to go, go, go. Like, uh, do you think that majority of people lack this skill of mental toughness or it's just not like surface level known? Mm, yeah, I, I, I guess I would say that a lot of people lack mental toughness. I feel like, it, yeah, I feel like it's thing, especially, and I don't know, I didn't live in the fifties or whatever, but I know that as like human, I'm not, I'm not a anthropologist, but whatever, <laughs> as human evolution is like carried on, We've had to do less and less tough things. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, we haven't had any, like, wars or anything, thankfully. Not yeah. Too recently, you know what I mean? And then people just, like, slowly get more and more nitpicky over, like, their lives and stuff. It's like, it's like, oh, I don't have enough time to do this. Like, oh, I don't have enough time to do that. It's like, well, if, like, you really want something, you'll make time. You know, if you're, like, you know, if you're mentally tough enough, you'll just, like, figure out a way. You know what I mean? And if there isn't a way for you to actually make time, then, like... You're either making a trade-off somewhere else, like, say you have a job or something, or, like, I don't know, you, like, go to the movies every week on Tuesday. Some dumb excuse. Yeah. I you mean, know, it's like, if, if that's more important to you, then, then that's fine to say yes. It's not you being mentally weak. If you actually feel that's more important to you, it's just if you decide that something else is more important, but you just keep not doing it, you know what I mean? Because, like, oh, I don't have time. Just making, like, BS excuses, essentially. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of people just don't have, like, the thing to say, like, no, maybe I shouldn't go to this movie. Maybe I should go to the gym. Just, like, I know I should be doing you know I mean? Yeah. Well, it's, that's just thinking long term. Yeah, and that's I often reflect on like the fact that like, hey, I'm very blessed. I live in North America. We don't have any wars. Yeah. You know, and that that's almost motivation alone for me to push myself harder because we're we're living in a in a, in a time in a country where we're prospering. Yeah. For you sure. know, like the economy is great. Like we have opportunities. We should seize them and and like. If, if times were, like, sucked and nobody had any money, then we, we wouldn't be putting ourselves out of our comfort zone. We would only be concerned with surviving. Yeah, exactly. We should be taking advantage of, like, the fact that, like, yeah, maybe, like, you have a crappy home life, but, like, you have 
tons of advantages to the fact that like you have opportunities to leave your comfort zone and push yourself. Yeah, and just grow as a person. Yeah. I feel like that's what mental toughness did. It's like you're like it's like your like strength or like whatever your muscles to like grow as an individual. Like I mean do the stuff that's hard, right? Yeah. It's easy to grow as an individual just like you can pick like the low hanging fruit but mental toughness is reaching to the top of the tree even though you gotta stretch for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I feel like a lot of people they just don't have to stretch as often anymore. Like people still do obviously like I'm not super mentally tough, like, no one's perfectly successful in life, but still, you know what I mean? Just, like, developing that over time and not giving up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even if you, like, screw up, you know, that's another part of mental toughness, it's just, like, like, getting, if you get kicked down into the dirt, it's, like, to like, keep bringing yourself, bringing yourself up, you know what I mean? And then not, like, yeah. getting, falling in this pit of self little thing either, like, if you're mentally tough too, like, you mean, that your, your self-confidence should just build itself naturally, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, you know, and it's like maybe thinking I'm a piece of shit will not help me in life. You know? I got to change my attitude, you know? Yeah. Or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, that just understanding that you got to give yourself breaks. You yeah, got to you sure. got you got to love yourself and like being mentally tough is sometimes like being tough so that you stop yourself from beating yourself up. That's almost a level of toughness on its own. Yeah, it's like it, it, it's crazy. Like I, you could probably write like thirty million books on mental toughness. Like, that's why that's why I brought it up because I feel like it's just the pinnacle of like not just like lifting or anything. It's just like if you want something to succeed in life, I feel like you can't get around not having that. And yeah. if you have, you probably just won the lottery and you got lucky. So congrats to you, the two people on earth. <laughs> but everyone but, else, like you need to you need to work on that, and I, you can work on that in so many ways. And I feel like the gym definitely helps with that, and that's the thing I noticed for sure. Maybe. It's definitely convoluted because there's other variables, but I, when I started playing football, yeah, I was like, like going through puberty and developing into an adult, but it's like football just seems to like, shape my mental toughness. So now I have like I have like something to pull from all the time like when, when things suck. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's I often say that I got all, all my, a lot of the values who I am as a person are rooted into football. That's where I started to define myself as a person and develop. And like, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I find this often, it's like, the people that are motivating other people are often people that like are obsessed with health and fitness or they're like gym goers or people like trying to like help shape other people for the better or people who like they start with the gym lifestyle or the health and fitness lifestyle because there's so much room for growing and like you know there's all this discipline that comes with going even when you don't want to and and lifting the weight even when it's heavy and even when you're sore that people that adapt the health and fitness lifestyle into their lives just by default end up being more disciplined people yeah yeah i completely agree it doesn't even like not even that lifting and all that has to be your way to develop mental toughness that's why people always associate people like in the military or whatever yeah with mental toughness as well it's like same same example obviously being in the military is way harder than being like playing football but still it's like similar like i guess similar ish situations where you're in this like camp or whatever you have to perform X objective, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or X amount of stress. You know I mean, that just, like, builds you. That's why people can always say, when people go away to the military, they just, like, they just change and they become, like, mentally tough. You know what I mean? You can, like, almost see it in their eyes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, they've grown so much as people. Yeah, in so, a short amount of time, usually, too. Yeah. So, I mean, you, say, you said, like, congratulations to the two people in the world that don't have to, but, like, you almost pity them because they don't, they didn't grow. You know, yeah. they, did, they didn't be who they could be. They didn't unlock the potential they had because they didn't ever grow. Yeah. And, like, the people who don't ever push themselves, you often find this. I mean, you probably know people in your life that don't ever push themselves out of their comfort zone. And, and they don't, they just, they haven't developed into anything, really. They don't really have established opinions. They don't, like, you know, there's, you really, like, by playing it safe and just worrying about survival, you almost get hurt the most. Than the people that are putting themselves in in danger. Yeah, in a way, yeah, it's kind of like inflation. Everyone else is like slowly growing, and you're just like staying at the exact same level. Yeah. Even, I feel, like, I feel like yeah, there's a lot of people almost like kind of like that. They're just like, man, it's like there's no way I can do this. Like I'm stuck here, and whatever. Like in using fitness goals as an example, like man, I can only bench 150. I'm stuck here forever. Like this sucks. You know? Yeah, and then you just give up. You don't go back, or you just only. You don't switch it up. You just keep trying the same thing over and over. Yeah, where they pop on roids, you know. Yeah. Sadly, it's the truth, but yeah, yeah, definitely. It makes me sad, but yeah. 
So what do you think is the best piece of advice to give somebody who's struggling with mental toughness? In your opinion, like somebody listening to this maybe who really doesn't quite understand what it, what they should be doing, what's the first step towards being a more mentally tough person? Mm, uh, that's probably super individual, but I guess it would just yeah. be like putting yourself out there, you know what I mean? Yeah. What is uncomfortable for you, you know, just go do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I know it's hard. People like, like or, or, I don't know. I'm not. I'm terrible with relationships, but you know, what I mean? people always want to ask someone else out, and they're like, "Oh, I'm too nervous. What if I get rejected?" Yeah. So just go do it. Yeah. Like, build your mental toughness by using it. You know, like, oh, I'm yeah. scared of playing football. I'm gonna get beat up. Just go do it. Yeah. You'll yeah. learn what not to do for yeah. the next time. And then the next time you're like, you know, once you go through those like, those like lessons or whatever, it's like, you just realize that you're not a soft, fragile piece of dough like you. You can take it, you yeah. know, falling on your ass or like getting rejected or like never. I mean, if, even if you get cut from the football team, like you can take it. You can, you can still move on from there. Yeah. You mean? Just, so you just be willing to like go through like things that you have to be willing to go through the suck, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And I, like, I know like Elliot Halls gave this one piece of advice that was really good. Um, someone asked him what they they didn't know what to do with their life. Um, they just didn't know because maybe they just didn't know how to push themselves. They didn't know when they, what they wanted to pursue. And his piece of advice with them would be to move out, go volunteer in a homeless shelter, go try and live homeless. Like go, go push yourself beyond what you would ever imagine possible. And you will grow more in that time than you could ever imagine. Yeah. You know, cause like the, the, the further you put yourself away from what you're used to, the more growth there is for you. I think that's just what I believe. Yeah. Even if even if it sucks at the time, you're gonna grow from it. You'll learn, like like you were saying, you'll learn what not to do for the next time. Yeah. That's why we have awesome technology and everything we have now. Trying and failing. Yeah, for sure, man. That's all why science is. Yeah, and that's all we have to do too. <laughs> try and try and fail until we succeed. Yeah, we just got like ten more takes of this, and we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap up the podcast. I think this was a very, very good conversation. I'm really glad all the different angles that we hit it. Thank you for joining me on the podcast, or my second official guest. And thank you guys for tuning in and listening. If you guys like the video, please leave a like, comment what you think that would be a good. Uh, subject for the next podcast i'm kind of working my way through a list but if you have any ideas of your own uh, feel free to comment them subscribe if you haven't that would really help me grow my channel and stay tuned for the next podcast class next out